Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia! Yes, Roger? Claudia, my poor ear. Where Mama. is the rock salt? Uh, Mama, where is the rock salt? How do I know? Where did you put the rock salt? Let me see. Let me see. I think the rock salt's in the, the pantry, Roger. I'll come and get it. I have right. the ice all broken up and put it in the freezer. All I need now is the rock salt and a little elbow grease. Hey, sweet. Mommy's there. having the best time making the ice cream. If his work is any indication, we'll all have the best time eating mm. it. Claudia, give me that knife. Yeah, right away, Mom. I'm curling the radishes and salad. I found the rock salt. How is the turkey coming along, Mrs. Brown? Coming along beautifully, Mr. Killian. Good. Am I allowed to look? You are not. Oh, the price of being hired help. I'm not even allowed to look for my troubles. <laughs> What's a look, Roger, when in a few minutes you can have a taste? Claudia, that knife, please. You're just waving it around. Oh, all right, here. By the way, how is the turkey, Mama? You're not allowed to look either. Oh, what dear. a household. Have you finished setting the table? Oh, my gosh, the table. I got sidetracked. Eating the nuts, I'll wager. I love nuts in the shell. They're such a challenge. Hey, Mom, aren't you glad we gave Fritz and Bertha the day off? Delighted. If everybody would kindly get themselves lost. Bring in the large platter when you come back in. Which large platter? How many large platters do you have, for heaven's sake? Oh, for heaven's sake, only one. Well, 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 well. How's the turkey coming, mother of mine? You too, David. I too what? The latest bulletin. The turkey is coming along fine. Well, see that he continues so. Where is everybody? In my hair. What? I mean, Roger's on the back porch cranking the ice cream. Oh? Claudia's in the dining room pilfering nuts. Mm. Julia's upstairs dressing the baby and thank goodness for the moment I am left alone. Well, anything I can do to help? Yes, get back into the living room. Mmm, these radishes look tasty. Don't you dare touch. Now, scat, David. Go on out of here. Thanksgiving dinner's woman's work. Well, remember, call me if you need me. Here is the platter, Mama. Just leave it there on the table. Oh, what a beautiful day for Thanksgiving. I could eat a house. Save your appetite. He's a very large turkey. Oh, Mommy, you're such a realist. Now, see, what can I do to help? Go and keep your husband company. Well, pass me that spoon first. Yep, here it is. You know, this is quite becoming to you, Mrs. Brown. What is? Being cooked to a houseful. Yes, it is quite becoming, even to the frilly apron under your chin. I hate frills. Remember, if you're ever looking for a job as a chief cook and bottle washer, you can ring my doorbell. Thank you so much, but after today, I abdicate. Well, hello. <laughs> my, 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 such hustle and bustle. Hello, Julia. Body all dressed? My nephew is all dressed. Good. Hartley's bringing him down, and I thought we'd put him in the sunny bay window in the dining room. Now, what can I do to help, Mrs. Brown? Not a thing, thank you, Mrs. Norton. Tell me confidentially, how is the turkey coming? Very nicely, thank you. Ooh, what a gorgeous smell. Mm. Here, give me that butter, Claudia. I'll roll it in a little bowl. All right, here you are, Julia. Uh, where are your butter paddles? The, uh, oh, uh, in that drawer, I guess. Mm. I'll finish the radishes, too. Well, how's the turkey coming, lady? I wish he could speak for himself. He's coming along fine, Mr. Norton, really fine. <laughs> Good. Baby uh, Don Hartley. And sleeping. For that, do I get a look at the f- festive bird? You oh. do not. I can hardly wait till dinner. How much longer? Well, just the about... The all done. Pardon me, but I'd like to get to the seat. Hello there, Hartley. Good to see you, Kelly. Pardon me. Me, oh, but you need me to open the olives? Oh, thank you on the shelf there, darling. Excuse me, but if I... it's time for dinner, shouldn't we put the rolls in the oven? Hey, I David, I'll really run down my foot. Oh, sorry, I can't get around the table. Here's the rolls. Oh, oh thank you. I'll take them. Hartley, uh, listen, if you're not busy, did you take the cranberries out of the mug? You're near the ice box. Too tight. Excuse me, but I must get into the oven. I must Hardly get into the oven. Mama, you have a wild look in your eyes. Any wonder? Excuse me, Roger. but it's getting a little crowded, isn't it? Oh well, there isn't anybody else expected. Is giving something to knock this again? There's your answer, Mr. Killian. I never breathe, Mr. Tucker. Well, Mr. Tucker. I ain't Tucker. late, am I? No, you're just on time. You know everybody. I reckon I do. If I don't, it's soon will. Greetings, all. Hello, Mr. Tucker. <laughs> Come on in. Make yourself at home, Mr. Tucker. Why don't you. you all want to go into the living room? I'll call oh, you. Oh, heavens no. I'd much yeah, rather help. So would I. Sure. Oh, I need one for the ice cream. Anybody oh, seen yeah, the yeah, bomb? Yeah, well, Excuse me, but I'd like to. Is this all right for the I've never seen so many horses in one stable. There's so much Thanksgiving in one kitchen. I'm going to get myself down to the dining room and relax my gums for two. Come on, all of you, clear out. I ain't wasting no energy on it. 
Well, I, I guess that's everything. Now, let me see. Bread, well, butter, radishes, um, um, potatoes, nuts, Roger, peas. You sit there. Here comes David with the turkey. And some critter, oh, ain't he? Oh, oh, I married him. No it's insults meant, ma'am, but I was talking about the birds. Oh, I see. <laughs> Stuff with stuff. Oh, everybody are. sit down, please. Yes, oh, especially Mrs. Take Brown. Take you look quite done in. Honey, you tired? Not a bit. Well, we all helped, so I should yes, think you all helped. It was a little like cooking in a subway rush, <laughs> but I liked it, and thanks for the help. Uh, here we go, Mr. Bird. Here we go. Oh, my, this is nice. Yeah. I don't remember anything so nice in a long time. Neither do I. Even last year was different. It is a lot different this year. I, I've got so much more. Yep, that's the way it is. Yes, indeedy. Yep. Up to a certain point in your life, every year things grow and accumulate. You get more family, you get more friends. Well, we couldn't have any better friends. Thanksgiving table gets itself longer and longer. Yep, then, then comes kind of a turning point, and every year, when you gather yourselves together, the old family's smaller. Got fewer of the old friends left. That's oh. life, I'm afraid. Yeah, table gets itself short again. Sway life, she says, that's what it is. Growing and falling away and then growing again. Well, we'll all be here a long time together. There'll be a lot more of us, too. Wait and see. You're darn tootin', I'll wait as long as I can, but I, I remember a heap of Thanksgivings, I do. Well, you remember a heap more, too, I'll bet. I remember 86 of them. Well, he always tells it the same way. Ah, but... mind your manners, son. <laughs> Counting all of them when I was sleeping like young Master Norton there, not knowing what all the shooting was about. One year, there was a good bit to be thankful for. Well-stacked smokehouse, healthy season, good crop. Then there was them years where he had to scrape pretty sharp for something to be thankful for, and when the world seemed a pretty niggardly place to wish onto a friend. Yes, it's a pretty sorry world today. It's funny, but they're the years I remember best. Well, things even out, and all in all, I'd say it uh, weren't so much for me to complain about. Well, uh, how are you carving, son? He's oh, doing very well. Either. Well, I'm sitting here chattering like a starved monkey. No, I'm doing <laughs> fine, doing fine. So are you. I'll keep on talking and our carving, and you keep on chattering, Mr. Tucker. Yes, yes, I'll keep it up. Nothing I enjoy better. <laughs> I wish... Oh, golly, I wish... What are you wishing now, Mrs. Norton? I wish Bobby'd wake up. There's so much he's missing sleeping away in the window. Now, let him uh, sleep, uh, Mrs. Norton. He'll wake up soon enough. Yep. <laughs> Besides, he ain't so different from lots of folks years and years older than him who go through their whole lives with their eyes shut to all the most important things going on. That's the world's just busting with them kind of folks, yes. You know, somehow listening to you talk, Mr. Tucker, I feel as if this, this were my first Thanksgiving. In a way, Claudia, maybe it is. You're right, Roger, maybe it is. Maybe the secret is that each Thanksgiving should feel like the first. It is your first Thanksgiving in New England, ain't it? Yeah. That shouldn't have anything to do with the feeling, should it, Mr. Tucker? Well, your first in the house, your first in New England, it's your first, all right, is. I don't mean that snooty, but when you're in this part of the country, you're in the hub. Right at the heart of things when it comes to celebrating with a goblin bird. <laughs> in a moment, Mr. Tucker's going to tell us that he remembers that first Thanksgiving day. <laughs> and, and I do at that. Oh, oh no. come now, Mr. Tucker. Thanksgiving is over 200 years old. And you said you were only 86. That's correct. Then how can you possibly remember? Well, I... Well, uh, some things you remember in your head, Mr. Killian. Others you remember into your bones. In your bones? <laughs> yep, in your bones. I, uh... I got a little marrow in my bones. They'd stack to them pilgrim fathers what celebrated the first Thanksgiving. If you call it celebrated, I... I just remember just about what it was like, I do. Oh, come on, tell us, Mr. Tucker, while David finishes carving. Well, as I see it, through my bones, that is, it wasn't much like this. No dining room table set heavy with vittles. No house all warmed up for comfort. No bangles on ladies' arms or silks for the dresses. Yeah, by the time end of November had come around, them pilgrim fathers felt the nip and, and the hunger and cold about them. But there wasn't but a but a threadbare few of them left, clustering together for warmth and courage. Mm, they had the courage, all right. Yep, they had that. They had faith alongside of it. Mm. Strong kind it was, too. The faith that things had shape around and that God had see them through the snow and the ice and the hunger. I wish I had that kind of faith. Well, you might have. When you need it is bad, ma'am. Mm. I wonder. Mighty little else us, those folks had but faith, matter of fact. Still, come around the end of November, them pilgrims thought it was about time to thank God for his bounty. They figured they owed him a heap of gratitude for their health, the freedom, and for being allowed to live so long in their bitter wilderness. If you could call that living. Well, living it was. For them, well... They decided if they was to thank God for his generosity, 
they should celebrate it with feasting. But the cupboard was sparse, smokehouse emptied, the grain in the barn running low, and the winter loomed long. There, 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 there just wasn't nothing around to celebrate with. But they had the thought, so they'd find the way. Kind of feisty versy with us, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is that. This knife is dull. Yeah. So, as I was saying, they set into the woods to kill themselves a meal. Sure, they expected there'd be deer around, or even a wild bear. They'd have real good meat for the feast. But it wasn't that kind of a year. No, no, just, just wasn't that kind of a year that year. The animals had disappeared into the forest or else died of hunger in the thicket. That's the way, a feast or a famine. Yeah, that's and, the way it goes. This and this, this, this one, this one there, sure did look like a famine. Well, they hunted and they hunted and finally come toward the middle of the week. One man, he kills himself a beast. Yes, he did kill the beast. No deer, no bear, no meat, but only a wild feathered bird. Stringy and lean and tough with age, but something to eat. So... He, he weren't much to be proud of. The bird was brought into the village, and the pilgrims sprung into action. Mm, just, we're springing into like, action today, huh? Yes, just like here this morning <laughs> with all of you pitching in on the dinner. So did them stubborn pilgrims pitch in. The bird was bled and feathered and roasted, along with a uh, few dusty potatoes and beans. Got some and uh, one family found some forgotten nuts, another an apple in the barrel bottom. All put together, the pilgrims imagined they had a feast. Like Slim pickings, we'd call it, but to their crying stomachs, a feast. Yeah. Then, when the bird was brought in from the fire and set upon the table to eat, the pilgrim fathers and mothers and children stood up around him and said, God, we thank you. We thank you for our freedom, for our home, for our health. For all the blessings you do bestow upon us. And most especially, dear God, we do thank you for this here turkey. And friends, you can take it from me that this here pilgrim turkey, he wasn't half as juicy and fat and pretty as this here one sitting right here. So serve him up, Mr. Norton. We'll set our gums to chewing and our hearts to say thanks. Here we go. Cost me a wig. Your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola and the cast of Claudia join you in giving thanks for the bounty we enjoy here in America. And they wish you, one and all, a pleasant Thanksgiving day. Quite a story, old man Tucker told, wasn't it, Mr. Killian? Yes, quite a story indeed, Mr. Killian. And true, as if he'd been there himself. But one thing he said stuck with me more than anything else. I wonder if it's what I'm thinking. He said that first the pilgrims had the thought and then the turkey. They wanted to say thanks, and then they found the way to say it. That's exactly what I was thinking. We today are so liable to say thanks, eat our turkey, celebrate Thanksgiving, and then at the very end stop to realize that we have a great deal to say thanks for. Yes, I'm glad I was there, even if there hadn't been a bone to eat. But there was a bone to eat. Oh, don't remind me. I quite lost my head. I, I took twice of everything, and now I feel very sorry I did. You don't really feel sorry, though. Don't I? I shall never eat again. Never. <laughs> Sounds familiar. And tomorrow you'll see that you've made that vow in very good company. And that you'll even break it in very good company. Well, I, I'm not convinced. Oh, dear, I'm off to take a nap. Happy Thanksgiving, Mr. King. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs>